Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn how to use NevMesh. This is Unity's built-in pathfinding tool. Also, this video is a lecture taken from my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Unity is massive, so in the course I explain over 30 features and tools of the engine that you might not know about. There's individual lectures explaining tons of things, like shader graph, assembly definitions, pro builders, script execution order, and so on. Also, the course will continuously be updated with free updates as I add more lectures explaining more and more tools and features. So go ahead, get the full course, and learn how to master all of the Unity tools to help you make better games faster. In this lecture, we're going to learn all about NavMesh in Unity. This is Unity's built-in pathfinding system. So first of all, NavMesh stands for the Navigation Mesh. The system bakes a mesh which the agents can then use for navigation. So let's see how to use it. Over here, I've got my demo scene. So I just have a simple plane, then I have a cube acting as an obstacle, and finally just a basic player capsule. So, first of all, we need to bake the navmesh. Now to open the navmesh menu, go up here into Window, then down here into AI, and we have Navigation. So this opens up the Navigation window. Now up here, just go into the Bake tab, and we have a whole bunch of settings, but for now, leave it all on default, and we just go ahead and click on Bake. And as soon as you do, nope, nothing happens. That's because we need to identify what objects we want to be walkable. So in this case, let's select the plane. And then on the navigation window, let's go into the object tab. And over here, let's tick the box that says navigation static. This means that this object will not move. So for the purposes of navigation, it is a static object. Now, another way to set this would be simply through the inspector. Over here, you see a little static. And if you click on the little arrow, you can see all of the various ways that this object can be static. So in this case, we made it navigation static. Now with just that, if we go back into the navigation, into bake, and we click on bake, and yep, we do see our navigation mesh. So it's in a light blue, there it is. So this is all the areas that our agents can walk in. However, just like this, the issue is that it didn't identify this cube as an obstacle. So again, let's do the same thing. First of all, select the cube. Now let's mark it as static. And in this case, let's make it through the inspector. And we can either just individually make it navigation static or just make the whole thing static. So these are the various kinds of static things that you can have, but in this case, navigation static is all that matters. So there it is, it's set. And now back on navigation, if we click on bake again, yep, there you go, now it automatically identifies the cube. So the walkable area is in light blue, and then you can see over here on these corners, nope, the agent cannot go through there. All right, so, so far so good. We have our correct basic nav mesh. Now let's make the agent actually use it. So let's select the player game object. And over here on the inspector, let's add a component. Down here, go into navigation, and let's make this a nav mesh agent. Then again, for now, let's leave all of the parameters at default. Now, in order to tell the agent where to go, we need to make a simple script. So let's make it. Let's just create a new C -sharp script. Call this the player nav mesh. Let's attach it to the player game object, and let's open the script. Now here, the first thing we want is to grab the navmesh component, and in order to access that type, we need to add using unity engine.ai. And then here, let's make a simple private void awake, and on awake, let's do a get component of navmesh agent. All right, so we have our navmesh agent reference. And now let's make a private void update, and on update, let's tell it where to go. So the way we do that is we go into the navmesh agent and we modify the destination. So for the destination, let's add a transform reference so we can tell the agent where to go to. So up here, let's make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor of type transform and let's call it move position transform. Okay, so we have that reference and down here, just set it to that one dot position. Okay, so our agent will be moving towards our move position transform. So back in the editor here, I've got an object that I made. It's just a very simple sphere, just a nice material, so we can visually see where it is our target. So just on the player, just drag that transform reference, and there it is. So now the player should move towards our move target, but in this case, there's an obstacle in the middle, so it should go around the obstacle. Okay, so let's see. And yep, there's the agent going towards the move target, and as you can see, it does avoid the obstacle. So if I move the obstacle, I put it in there, you can see that it never goes through the obstacle. Instead, it collates a path and knows how to get there. All right, so that's the absolute basics. As you can see, it automatically avoids the obstacles on the nav mesh. So it knows to go around the wall instead of just ramming against it. 
Now that we've seen the basics, let's inspect some of these parameters. And for that, here is a slightly more advanced demo scene. So I've got this level that I built using ProBuilder, which I also cover in detail in another lecture. So I've got some basic floor, I've got some stairs, an area above, I've got some overhangs, the usual objects, I've got some jumping areas, some slopes, and so on. So now let's inspect on the navigation, let's go into bake. And in order to bake all of this area, once again, I need to make sure that all of these objects are static. So I can just select the parents since all of these are children and just mark it as static and automatically apply to all children. So make all children static. And now if I go into bake and I hit on bake, it automatically bakes the area. Okay, so far so good. Now let's look at these parameters. So you've got these two ones related to the agent. So that's the agent, essentially the width and height. So as I increase the width, let's say of one, and I hit on bake again, let's see what happens over here into this area. So as I hit on bake, yep, there you go. As you can see, as the agent becomes more thick, essentially the area that it can wall becomes smaller and smaller. So let's increase this a bit more, and there you go. Now the agent is so thick that it cannot actually pass through this gap. So the height is a similar thing, except it affects some overhangs. So for example, over here, I've got an area above and an area underneath. And right now the agent can indeed go underneath there, but if I increase the agent height and nope, now it can no longer go there. Next up, we've got the max slope. So this is the angle that the agent can climb. So over here, I've got these two nice slopes. So this one is on 25 degrees and this one is on 40 degrees. And here the max slope and the step height are slightly connected as you can see by the warning here. So for now, let's make the step height pretty big. So we can see both these slopes, let's put it on the near maximum, so right there. So if I put it like that, you can see that the agent can indeed climb this slope as well as this one, which is quite a bit more intense. Look at that, so it can climb that and that. But if I now bring it down to maybe something like 30, yep, now the agent can indeed climb through this one, but it cannot climb that one. So the next one is the step height. So over here, we've got some real nice steps. Again, these were built automatically using ProBuilder, really useful. So if I set it at 0.1, then these steps are bigger than that. So the nav mesh does not bake, so the agent cannot use these steps. So just increase them a bit. And if there you go, now these steps, their height is under that one, so it can indeed do that. So now let's just briefly play around and see all of this in action. So over here, let's just modify the code to only move towards the target position after I press the spacebar. So in here, if just a simple input, get key down. When I press the spacebar, then go towards there, otherwise don't just so I can manually tell it when to move. So like this, if I tell the agent to go there, so I press space, yep, there you go, it does go around that obstacle. Now if I tell it to, for example, go up there, so I press space, and there you go. As you can see, the agent does know how to climb through the ramp. And if I go down there, he should know how to go down through the stairs. So just like this, and yep, it automatically goes down. And again, for the overhang down there, the agent also knows how to do that. So he can go through there and go down there. But if I try to tell the agent to go through this slope, which is way too intense, and the agent comes close, but it gets there and that's it. He can no longer go upwards. Okay, then we have the generated off mesh links. So these are connections between parts that are not directly connected. So the first one is the drop height. So for example, if we want the agent to be able to just drop from there down there, we can just increase this. And look at that. Now the agent can indeed drop from any of these points down there. So if I tell the agent to go up there, the agent takes the stairs, goes through there, okay. And now if I drag this and I put it all the way down there, let's see what the agent does. Yep, he goes through that link, drops down, and continues going. So those are the various drops. And the final one is the jump distance. If I set the jump distance to be high enough and I head on bake, yep, there you go, now we've got some links. So the agent can jump from here to there and from there to there. So let's get the agent all the way up there and then move it on the other side, press on space, and yep, there you go, it uses the nav mesh in order to jump up there. So this is how you link various nav meshes together. And then you've got the advanced tab. So these are much more advanced settings. First of all, the manual voxel size. So under the hood, the way that all of this works is Unity converts the entire scene into voxels and identifies which ones are walkable. So you can essentially play around this value to get more or less accuracy. Now, if you lower the voxel size, it will be much more accurate, but at the cost of longer bake times and higher memory consumption. And if you set it to bigger, then it becomes less accurate, but also more performance. 
but this is for a really advanced use case, so in most cases you really shouldn't need to touch this at all. And then you've got the minimum region area. So this is the minimum size that a region needs to be in order to be walkable. So for example, right now, if I lower the agent radius and I hit on bake, you can see that this area in here is marked as walkable. But if I then increase the minimum region area, there you go, that one is too small to be considered to be walkable. So again, this helps on optimization in order to not have to bake areas that are not meant to be walkable. And finally, you've got the height mesh setting. So this impacts things like, for example, the stairs here, which as you can see, the nav mesh is really a slope, so it's not stairs. And if you enable the height mesh and hit on bake, and over here on the nav mesh display, also enable the viewing of the nav mesh. If you do that, then you can see, yep, the nav mesh perfectly matches the stairs. So with the height mesh, if I tell the agent to climb through the stairs, you can see that instead of sloping, he goes up the stairs exactly like that. So again, this is really due to personal performance, but it also does have a memory cost in order to create all of these separate areas. So once again, in most cases, just having a slope is more than good enough, so no need to actually enable over here the height mesh. Okay, so these are all of the bake parameters. Now let's see the agent parameters. So here is the default nav mesh agent component. First one you see is over here the agent type. So you can open the agent settings and it opens up the navigation window over here on the agent tab. And this is where you can set all kinds of different types of agents. So for example, if you've got a small humanoid, but then a giant orc, this is where you would add all the various types. So you can set the radius, the height and so on. Then the base offset is essentially the Y position over here on the agent. So if it's at zero, then the agent origin, this is what matters for the compilation. Next up, you've got the various steering settings. So first the speed, this is how fast the agent actually moves. Then you saw the agent also rotates to face the direction it's moving towards. So this is how fast it turns. Then the acceleration, so how fast it accelerates. The stopping distance, so how far from the target position does it start to stop. And then auto braking to prevent the agent from overshooting the target. Then you've got the obstacle avoidance. So this is related to avoiding other obstacles. They can be fixed obstacles or they can also be other agents. So you've got the usual settings, radius, height, then again the quality. So naturally higher quality avoidance will look better and avoid collisions more naturally, but again at the cost of more expensive performance. And then the priority for the agent. So for example, if you had 100 NPCs walking around and one player character, you would obviously make the player have much higher priority in order to have the collisions be much more accurate relative to the player. And then the pathfinding settings. So the first one, does the agent automatically traverse the nav mesh links? So those are the jumps that we saw here and drop down there. If you want to handle some complex animations or some extra settings when jumping between links, then maybe you want to disable this and handle it manually. Otherwise, it will move like we saw. Then the auto repath, which is if you want the agent to constantly collate the path to the destination to take into account any moving objects that might block the agent as it's moving. And finally, the area mask. So this is where you set which areas the agent can walk and which ones they cannot. So in this case, so far we've been using the most basic thing possible. We really just have walkable and not walkable. You can define the areas over here on the navigation window, go into areas and you can add all kinds of them. So for example, you add a new water area. Then in order to define an area with this particular area type, you simply select the object. So let's actually make a different one. Okay, so I add this little cube here to mark our area. So you just go into object and over here, select the object. And here you've got the drop down menu where you make what type of area this object belongs to. So in this case, let's say this one belongs to water. And once again, just hit on bake. And yep, now it identifies that this one is some water, but you can see, especially if we hide the object, yep, you can see that it's on a different color. So this one is on a different area. So you can see the blue is the walkable area, perfectly normal. And the next one is the water. So there you go, this one is on a different area. Then you can, for example, select the player and over here on the nav mesh agent on the air mask, say that the player cannot walk through water. And now just like this, if I tell the agent to go there, yep, he does not go through there. Again, this area is walkable, just not walkable by this agent. But now if I take the agent and I once again say that this one can now walk on water and now move it over there, press on space, and yep, it does now go through that area. So you can see how with just these basics, you can already do quite a lot with the Unity's nav mesh system. So whenever you need some pathfinding for your games, consider the nav mesh system. All right, so this was a lecture from my ultimate Unity overview course. 
There's a lot more explaining tons of things like shader graph, assembly definitions, pro builders, script execution order, and so on. Go ahead and get the full course and learn how to master all of the Unity tools and features to help you make better games faster. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.